it's not often you find an estate car that makes Audi's 552 horsepower RS6 feel a bit limp, but in the Walkinshaw Performance VXR8 Monaro, we found just that. It's got 610 horsepower, 590 foot-pounds of torque. Hold on to your Labradors, things are gonna get smoky. When it comes to big, fast estate cars, Audi pretty much wrote the book. And this RS6 is the latest, biggest and baddest that they do. It really is an absolute monster. It's got a four litre twin turbo V8, which is good for 552 horsepower. The car weighs 1900 kilos, maybe a little bit more than that. It really is physics in action this thing so quattro audis generally speaking are all about traction and the ability to put down their enormous power and torque into the tarmac and fire you down the straights but on a circuit that generally translates to something that's pretty inert but bizarrely this rs6 actually feels like it's up for a bit of fun if you trail the brakes into the corner <laughs> It's really keen to slide. It takes a lot of hanging on to, but I've never experienced anything quite like that. Another amazing thing about this car is even though you're asking it to do stupid things, it still remains extremely composed and it's kind of, it doesn't really ever complain too much, which you would think a two ton estate car would really not enjoy this. <laughs> it's really, really composed, but if you can't get the tail to move, it really struggles with direction changes. It, it just washes wide, and whatever you do with the throttle, it just resolutely stays in a neutral to understeery kind of stance which certainly doing this is not what you want it to do it's kind of indicative of the the lack of fun you have in these on the road they're supremely capable things so let's see if we're trying to go quickly and not slide around what kind of a lap time we can put together over the line, start the lap, 113 miles an hour into this hairpin. The brakes are beginning to get a bit whiffy. Hopefully they'll stand up for a lap. Again, it just punches you up to way over 100 miles an hour, which it just shouldn't be able to do. It's such a big car, really good grip through there direction change again is just soft and you feel yourself washing out to the edge of the track. Another big braking area, another awkward direction change. <laughs> it's impressive but it's just not, not the kind of fun you would hope to be able to have. Right fourth gear and again nearly 110 miles an hour it's really struggling to stop come on come on come on don't want to understeer through this corner too much he says understeering too much come on last corner oh, it just wants to push wide over the line now it might be an unlikely track car, but there's no denying the effectiveness of Quattro all-wheel drive and 552 brake horsepower. A best of 1 minute 26.5 puts the RS6 in serious company, precisely matching our best time in our other all-wheel drive monster, the Porsche Panamera Turbo. The VXR8 clearly has its work cut out. So the RS6 is the 
accepted benchmark for big, really fast estate cars. This thing is totally left field. In fact, it's so left field, it's the only one in Western Europe, but we couldn't resist including it in a track battle because let's face it, it's got over 600 horsepower and nearly 600 foot-pounds of torque. It's basically, it's a supercharged version of the standard car. So the standard car is a 6.2 litre GM sourced V8. Uh, it's a very basic, simple car in a lot of respects. Six speed manual box, rear wheel drive, um, and as we've said, shed loads of power. It's not a particularly special thing to be in. It's quite basic, it's quite plasticky. But that said, it's got quite a lot of charm as you can hear it makes a proper noise so immediately you, you want it to feel good the, the steering's quite light it feels like you can play with the balance of the car with the throttle and obviously with that much grunt it's just going to light the rear tires up as often as you like which there's something quite special about cars that do this there may be no practical reason for having a car that does this. <laughs> but it's pretty good fun. <laughs> and that's fourth gear at 120 miles an hour. <laughs> like the steering, the brake pedal doesn't give you a huge amount of initial confidence. But there's some power there which again is all you need really to work with. Ooh, pick it up on the throttle. And it doesn't have romp on down the straight. That's 95 in third. There's a lot of weight to stop and a lot of weight to change direction. It's 1830 odd kilos, I think, which is pretty heavy, but it's 100 kilos or so lighter than the Audi, so Again, with a power advantage and a weight advantage, the only thing it suffers with is a lack of traction. Right, let's try and do a fast, tidy lap. I suspect it's going to be quite difficult to not slide it, but we'll give it a go. Oh dear, I failed already. actually feel like it's slowing you down a huge amount sliding it to be honest because there's <laughs> it's so keen to oversteer you don't really have to deal with much understeer so around a trap you can hustle it pretty well and not have to think too much about being tidy I'm glad I'm not paying for the tires or petrol I think our average MPG is about one and a half at the moment. Okay, another big braking area. Oh, they're a bit soft. I think we've had the best of the brakes, unfortunately. But you can just provoke it really quite precisely, actually. Last corner. <laughs> And across the line. As expected, the VXR8 is a far more entertaining car, but it really struggles to put its prodigious supercharged power into the tarmac. Traction limited and with an apparently insatiable appetite for oversteer, this big-hearted brute can't combat the ruthless Audi's effectiveness, only managing a best of 1 minute 29.9. However, what it lacks in finesse and composure it more than makes up for in raw fun. What an insane device. 